Part 3. Chapter 2. Checkpoint. If things go badly at the checkpoint song, don't worry. I'll improvise. I have a plan B. It's always good to have a plan B. Manda Kidfar to Zong, moments before they arrived at the checkpoint at Ruzegdula. Officer of the watch, handing off, said a green-skinned female Danav in a clipped tone. She had orange eyes, goat-like ears sticking out the side of her head, long dark hair, and a three-sided mouth. She was dressed in a black and blue uniform of the Danav Starfleet. She was standing straight, like someone had jammed a rod down her spine. Officer of the watch accepting the watch, Pallar Dreeb said in response, not standing nearly as upright as his young, eager, brand new officer who'd been sent from Homeworld. Pallar was green like his fellow Danav, but his brown hair was cut short, and he was taller and broader than the seemingly tiny young woman. She bowed to Pallar and handed over a computer tablet. The next group of ships are in the queue, sir. They've already passed through the Noel Duggan side. Naturally, Pallar sighed and glanced about at the round command deck. There was a command table in the middle of the room that was glowing with whisper images. Windows around most of the command deck gave a broad view of the green and blue planet Ruzeg Dula below. Straight ahead was a blocky Noel Duggan space station, and between it and the more sleek and elegant Denov space station was a pair of security rings with a neutral zone between where two lines of traffic collected. There were ships going to the Noel Duggan realm and ships waiting to pass through into Denov space. High Command asked me to point out, sir, the young officer said, drawing Pallor's attention, that new protocols are in effect. All relevant information has been uploaded to the main computer and the... Pallor narrowed his eyes at the woman. Are you telling me how to do my job, Lieutenant? The growl in his voice was a little harsher than he'd intended. No, sir, the girl said quickly, and she bowed again. Dismissed. Pallor said with an edge. The girl turned and hurried away. Sighing, glancing at the busy computer stations that lined operations, he walked to the control table, looked at the whisper images of the next ships in the queue, and took a deep breath. He leaned on the edge of the table, letting out a sigh. <laughs> well, she'll be questioning how far she'll climb up at this posting for the rest of the day, a voice chuckled behind Pallor, and he stood straighter, turning to watch Ober Drown stepping toward him. They'd worked together at this command for Yevs, they were old friends from the old Upper Zurian conflicts when they'd been starfighter pilots, and everything had been simpler. You know you outranked the girl, right? Pallor asked, smirking at his friend. I know, but High Command wants senior officers on ops while these new ones learn the lay of things. It didn't have to be you, Pallor offered. I like it up here, Ober said, looking out at the ships. Always have. Always will? Pallor asked. Ober frowned. Well, we'll see. You know, my wife wants to be closer to home since the grandchild was born. I... There was sadness in Ober's eyes. Blast! He sighed and looked down. He turned to look at Pallor again. What are we doing? After everything, how can the Vicery make a treaty with these Kroom? Pallor shook his head. Chief Commander! An officer called from one of the computer stations. Shall we begin the flow again? Yes, yes. Pallor said, waving a hand to the blonde Denov. Here we go again, Ober sighed. Yeah, Pallor agreed grimly, and watched the whisper images over the command table as a Kazakui ship pulled up as the next to be scanned. A red, top priority flag popped up. Our first catch of the day, Ober said with distaste. Kazakh ship, Kazakui 30, YCX 2006, registering on the ISC. 2107, 2019, Please stand by. A voice crackled over the comm in the cockpit. Zong winced, sitting back from the helm where Manda and Q were. Stand by, he asked. It's probably just standard procedure, Q offered. Just the same, Manda said, a cautious note to her voice. Be ready to put the shields up and give me weapons. Zong felt cold. Yeah, he agreed and turned to the computer station beside him. Apparently, the ship was seen in Upper Zurian space. It was unauthorized and caused some trouble. Furthermore, it has tried to cross the war zone into Kashna space, Ober said to Pallor, looking over the survivor's write-up. Looks like mischief at best. Probably a smuggler, maybe a bounty hunter. The crew flagged it, Ober pointed out. Thanks to the new treaty, whoever's in that ship is now just as much our enemy as the crew's. 
This is shaky. Pallor growled. Ops was quiet. What do you want to do, Chief Commander? Ober finally asked. What I want and what I will do are two very different things. He stared at the Kazna ship for a long moment. Then with a sigh, he looked it over and said, Launch a retrieval squad. Yes, sir. We have fighters launched, Amanda said, pointing out the forward window. Zong turned and looked, watching a squadron surrounding a larger vessel with grabber arms, pulling away from the sleek, pillar-like Denov space station. That's a retrieval squad, Q offered. I think this has just become not good. Oh, blast, Zong blurted. He looked at Amanda. Auntie? He asked, his silver eyes filled with concern. What do we do? Amanda's face was set. Then she gripped the helm. Give me shields and weapons, Zong. And hold on. They're running! A Denov officer called from his station. There they go, Ober agreed, pointing at the whisper image of the Kazna ship pulling out of the line of waiting vessels and speeding away, heading galactic north. Retrieval squad, I want that ship, Palor barked through the comm. Copy that. The squad commander responded. The whisper images of the other ships fell away and Palor was given a broad view of the Kazna ship and the pursuing Dinov starfighters. Where the blazes are they going? Obar asked. If they fall back into Noel Duggan, our treaties with them will have them in our hands in the Ur. They're going to run for Lower Zuria, Palor reasoned. We don't have treaties with them, but they don't take kindly to people running their border. Obar commented. Pulsar fire flashed across space as the retrieval squad closed in on the Kazna ship. Squad commander, make sure those are EMP blasts. I want that ship stopped, not destroyed, Pallor said into the comm. Chief commander, a female Denov said from her station. Sensors indicate the Kazna ship is spinning up her hyperdrive. Squad commander, it's now or never, Pallor shouted. The squad continued blasting away at the Kazna ship, but whoever was piloting that thing was amazing. They're jumping, the female Denov said. If we let them get away, there will be hell to pay, Obar warned. Pallor knew it. Blast, he growled, slamming a fist in the command table. Squad commander, when they jump, send a Hyperion depth charge after them. Copy? Copy, sir. With a miserable sigh, Pallor looked to Obar. Well, he grumbled. That's that. Outside, the Kazna ship streaked away. And as it did, a depth charge was fired in their wake, dragged into Hyperion space. A moment later, there was a strange ethereal flash that seemed to make local space, where the Kazna ship had just been, glow with burning light. A strange transparency seemed to allow, for just a moment, a glimpse into the other dimension of Hyperion space. Then everything went back to normal. The command deck was silent for a moment. You know, that's not a guarantee they're dead, Obar offered. It's a pretty good guarantee, Pallor replied with a sour note giving the fellow Denav an unhappy look. Denav Hyperion depth charges were good at their job. And if they survived? Obar asked. Then it's not our problem anymore, Pallor grumbled. Now let's bring up the next ship. Yes, sir, Obar said, bowing. Thank you for listening. Please uh, like subscribe and share with your friends and there are more episodes on the way.